All right, welcome back, everybody. Shane Carter here with Hampshire Capital, alongside with my good friend and co-worker, Eddie Austin, our VP of Investor Relations. How you doing, Eddie? I'm doing great today. All right, man. So today we're going to talk about um, time efficiency, time yeah. blocking. Uh, it, it goes by a lot of names, but in essence, uh, it's critically important, I think, to to business, to life in, in general, you know, and I think about when I was, uh, you know, a younger man and sort of working, uh, making whatever wage I was wake, making. Uh, and then I, as I got more and more enlightened in terms of how time is used and how companies work, you know, I started thinking, you know, big picture, everybody has the same time. We all get 24 hours a day. We all get seven days a week. We all get 365 days a year. How come some people make a hundred grand while other people make a million dollars a year while other people make a hundred million dollars a year? What is the difference? What are they doing? You know, and I think one of the foundations of that is being really efficient with your time and making the most out of, of every single moment. And Sort of what are the tips and tools and techniques of, of doing that? Yeah. Well, I can honestly say I'm a, I'm a person that could adopt this and probably need to adopt it because I can, all, I can tell you almost, I can tell you how many hours there is in a year. There are 8,760 hours in the year, and I work on average to uh, 18, 20 hours a day. Uh, Work-life balance is not always uh, the greatest, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I do take my weekends the best of my ability to spend time with a wife and family. And I am an entrepreneur. So when something comes up that there's a school event or there's a vacation or there's someone sick at home, I do drop what I'm doing and I go do that. But I've heard you talk a lot about time blocking. And as we've been together in the company and doing what we do, uh, I've heard you talk about it, just touch on small subjects about it. And, give a little bit of intel, but not the whole thing. So I'm interested in learning um, the email, the way you do your emails, mm -hmm. and then what is time blocking for you? So how, how can I adopt that? Yeah, so you know this is something I've been doing for, for a number of years now, but um, time blocking is, you know number one, you, you got to use a calendar program, right? And, and, and I adhere to that calendar program really well. Uh, we use Google, but there's there's obviously dozens of them out there that you can use. But but uh, we we use that platform, and so you know I have I have uh, I have business, I have life, I have you know personal things, but they all go in one calendar, right? Because again, we only have that that same block of time, and so um, let's say fitness for example, right? Fitness is important to me. Being healthy, feeling strong, feeling vibrant, feeling youthful regardless of my numerical age, very important to me. So, uh, you know, I time block my workouts and they're, they are a, an appointment that does not get missed as if I'm meeting with heads of state, right? I am not blowing off that meeting. It's a critically important meeting to me. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't care what's going on and what's happening. I'm making that meeting with myself and I am going to the gym and I am hitting that workout hard because after, you know, years and days, weeks, months, years of doing that, I know what the results are for me and, and how important it is to my overall um, health and wellness. So mm -hmm. there's that level of time blocking, obviously, like you said, critical children's events, right? I have got, I've got three kids, you've got kids, you know, really prioritizing those events and making sure that they're in my calendar and no matter what is happening around them, no matter what emergencies come up in business or otherwise, I am making that play. I am going to that recital. I am going to mm -hmm. that sports event, you know, that soccer game, et cetera. Even if it's just for my four-year-old, doesn't matter to him. That's mm -hmm. super important. So, um, yeah. and I want my kids to know that they are the most important thing to me. So those, well, go, those all go in there, right? No, I would also add to that is there's one thing that we truly, no matter how professional we ever get, uh, no matter what a program we adopt, there's one thing we don't have control of, and that is time. And unfortunately, we cannot wind back the clock. So just that thing, like you just said, with your four-year-old, that's important to him. And you can't go back to that. You can't remove his feelings from when you missed it, when dad was too busy. Yeah. You instilled that in his mind. And, and that's 
that's powerful to be able to do that. It is without so without on. a question. And and you know, look, once you get past, you know, just to step back and kind of take a, a quick big picture esoteric view, right? You, we you know we all everybody wants to make money and, and everybody you know uh, wants to be as successful as they want to be and um, you know maybe it's because you want to buy that Rolex or you want that Lamborghini or you want that big house, but ultimately when when you get to a certain point and you maybe bought some of those things and you realize that they don't mean as much necessarily. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, the only reason anyone truly wants wealth when they get there and realize it is so they can have more time, right? Exactly. So wealth and money, uh, true freedom is to be able to buy more time, to do what you want, when you want, with who you want it, who you want to do it with. And, you know, obviously to, to us, it's family. Um, yeah. And so, so that's what we do. What we do is to really be able to have more time with family mm-hmm. and with the people we want to be around and the relationships that we want to cultivate. So, um, so right. So there's time blocking for all of that. And then, you know, let's just talk about the business. So to me, there's only so many hours left in the day after that. And that's where mm-hmm. business comes in. Right. Uh, and so to me, um, the, the critical thing that I do, and, and this is a skill set that I've learned, you know, from uh, multiple different books and, and mentors and, uh, and, and different folks that sort of preach the same topic, which is that uh, you know, in, in our business, we, we um, are, you know, rolling out the EOS traction system and, you know, monthly rocks. And really what those are is, you know, specific measurable goals, right, that that, that, right. that aggregate to your big annual goal. Well, you can really get those goals back down to a weekly, daily um, goal mm-hmm. process. And so the first thing that I do when I get into my work time block, the first mm-hmm. thing that I do every day is work on my my one thing. If if you haven't read that book, awesome book, the one thing. And essentially what that is is it's the it's that one thing that's going to move the needle for your weekly goal. That's going to move the needle for your monthly goal. It's going to move the needle for your quarterly, annual, so on and so forth, right? You mm-hmm. can break everything down to that simplistic level. So you work on that first because you're going to get inundated. You're going to get slammed. There's going to be things coming oh, at yeah. you from every which direction that are going to pull you away from really accomplishing that one thing that you really need to do today to move the ball, to move the needle in your business, in your career, et cetera. So mm-hmm. you do that first, no matter what. You time block and you do that first, and then no matter what, whatever happens after that, you've moved the needle. You have already yeah. done it. No matter what you get encounter thereafter, you have done mm-hmm. that one thing, and that's the most important thing you needed to do that day. So before you look at emails, before you look at your text messages, I've got text messages sometimes that go unanswered for five hours and people are like, what the heck? You know, you get used to texting and getting a response, text, get a response. I don't even look at my phone. It's over there. It's put away. And I am focused on doing that one thing that I need to do until it's done. Then I'll pick up my phone and then I'll look at whatever text messages, voicemails, emails, because all of those things, those are requests from other people. Mm-hmm. Of of to take from your time and there are other right. the requests from other people for you to do something right presumably yeah. that would be for them and so you have to protect yourself and you have to focus on what is right for me my clients my business my investors etc get that done right. first and then really respond to everything else um, mm-hmm. and so email it, you know historically it has been for me and I think everybody it can be a huge time suck it can suck the life oh, out man. of your day. Yeah. Right. So I time block emails to just do it twice a day, you know, usually just one hour blocks. If if I'm feeling like I've got too much to do, sometimes they're half hour blocks, but that's it. I will go through and I will just do emails during those time blocks. And again, when I'm doing that one task, that is all I focus on. I'm not looking at my phone. I don't take a call. I'm just going unless it's my wife. I do take her calls. But uh, right. that, that's it. That's an agreement we have. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's a different agreement. <laughs> but but other than that, those blocks of time are sacred to that task and it makes you yeah. very efficient at it. Right. So mm-hmm. now I can knock out 100 emails and just go right through them uh, very, very quickly. Um, the other the other thing I'll add on on the email thing are what I call my three D's. And I don't remember where I picked this one up, honestly, but I love it. It's uh, the three D's for emails are. You, you just got to you, you always treat all three, uh, you know, any given email needs to go in one of these three buckets. Do it, mm-hmm. delete it, or delegate it, 
right? And and that's it. Don't save it for later. Just do one of yeah. those three things. If there's an answer and you know that you can't delegate it and you can, and you shouldn't delete it, you have to just do it. Then you do it right then and there before you go to that next email. I don't care if you glanced down and you saw that there's something super important five emails down. Just go one at a time. Bang, bang, bang. Knock them out. Do it, delegate it, delete it. Mostly, I use delete, right? I yeah. take myself off lists. I yeah. remove any emails that are extraneous. They do not go to my core mission and what I'm supposed to do for our company. I just don't even look at them, right? I just delete them. Yeah. The second most important one I use is delegate, right? And that's a critical critical resource oh, yeah. we all have. You know, who not how, who's, who's gonna be better at this? Who else should be getting this email? I wanna connect them and then say, please remove me from the email chain, right? I don't wanna see it again. You've got right. this, you can handle this. Um, you're taking care of this mm -hmm. and I'll catch up with you in our weekly meeting when we do that download where, where we now know everybody, what, what everybody's doing. Um, and then, you know, the do it part is again, you could save it for later and, uh, I just don't know how I want to, you know, respond to that now. I don't, not sure what to do about that. Just do it. Just take action yeah. and take, take, take the right action. Uh, have your priorities clear so that the action taking is simple for you get it done and then move on to the next email. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and man, that saves so much time. You wouldn't imagine. You, I, can imagine. I, I sit up some days and, you know, some days, you know, I've, I've only blocked off, you know, five hours to work in cause I got kid time and I got, you know, workout time and I've got this, that, and the other thing going on that day. So I might only have five hours of work time, but in some of those days you wouldn't believe it, Eddie, I'll look up and I'll be like, wow, cool. I, I'm, I'm kind of good for a little while. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cruising. I only had five hours yeah. today. So I go yeah. back into doing, you know, what is that my one thing? And I push that ball even a little further. What else can I do on right. that? How many more follow up calls can I make? How many more, um, you know, relationships can I continue to foster, et cetera? So mm -hmm. sorry, that was a, a long diatribe. But uh, but I think the, oh, those no, are I'm those are my secrets that. along the, those lines. I, I really think that's a, an impressive model. And I can even say. I've always had the uh, the proactive, not reactive, and every person I ever coached on entrepreneurship or even my employees that were in a supervisor or group leader level or anything like that, is they're like, man, how do you stay like ice in your veins? Like, how is that possible? Hmm. And it's because I am proactive. Even if I know the subject at the back of my hand and I'm busy with a bunch of things, if you come and ask me for it, unless you are probably my wife, Yeah. Um, I'm going to pause you for just a few seconds or a minute. And I'll get right back to it. Just give me one minute mm -hmm. and I'll finish what I'm doing. And then I'll turn around and I'll say, well, we need to do this, this, and this. And I'd like you to explain your email um, strategy. I knew the answer. I knew the answer the minute you asked me, but I wasn't going to react. Yeah. Because reacting is a snowball that gets out of control out of this world. I mean, at the end of the day, you were just busy and you got nothing physically done. That's right. All you did was react to everybody else and they took everybody your time. And it used to cause a lot of frustration in a lot of the places I was at because yep. everybody's like, man, I get so upset about so-and-so. And every time they come into my office, they, they got a, they're real wordy and they want to just keep going and going and going. And I was like, you're reacting. Yep. That's exactly your right. The problem is you're reacting. Yep. Be proactive. Hey, give me a few minutes. Uh, I'm busy right now, but in about 10 minutes, I got about 15. Okay. Mm -hmm. And That's then right. at 15, sorry, I got to go. Got something else to do. Yeah. And, and if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, <on>. right. <laughs> Adhere to that. That's absolutely right. Because it sets the right tone. It sets the right parameters. And again, it's about protecting your time. And, you know, I guess I didn't talk a lot about this, but, you know, again, it goes back to having clear priorities, clear objectives. Yeah and a clear path and a clear vision on what you want to achieve every day, what you want to achieve every week, every quarter, every month, every quarter, right? And, and knowing what you're, what is going to actually move the needle for you, what is actually going to move that ball. Uh, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to, you know, when, when I really, really truly understood this, it put it all in a better con context, which is that every voicemail, every text, every email is somebody else's agenda not yours, right? Unless they're yeah. replying to your email request, yeah. right? Or something. But but pretty much most of the emails that we get that aren't responses to our emails, they're somebody else's agenda, somebody else's ask, right? right. And so 
um, you know, it's important to protect your time to, to first accomplish your own critical path tasks and right. then, you know, help other folks with their agenda and, and, and work towards, you know, cleaning up that email. But no, man, yeah. until, until you get there, it, it can really, it can suck an entire day or an entire week away from you. And you're like, man, I don't feel like I got anything done. Right. And then ultimately it affects your mindset. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know, then, then, then your wife and kids don't understand why you're upset. Well, cause I had a, a bucket full of things I was going to do today mm -hmm. and it was crabs in a bucket. Every time I tried to reach up and get out, somebody dragged me back down. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, but you, you, you can protect yourself from that, right? You can yeah. set up yeah. very strict parameters and the more you send the message that, you know, I adhere to these parameters, Number one, people are going to respect that. If they don't respect that, then mm, I would question, you know, whether or not they're the right folks to, to be around or to do business with. Uh, but everyone should respect anyone with clear parameters, right? Clearly, clearly spoken parameters. That's why I like every meeting to have an agenda, have a timeline, have an objective and have a closing time. Uh, it's it's just the best way to run a meeting. So it is. Uh, because it's all about clarity and having those clear objectives, clear agendas, clear timelines. Uh, but it continues to send that subconscious message to yourself that, you know, you are someone who respects yourself. You you respect your own time. You respect your own value. And you expect everyone else to, to respect that as well. And furthermore, you respect everyone else's time and everyone else's individual value. And it's a two-way street, right? And so that is, uh, to me, that's the more powerful message that that being really efficient with your time sends to yourself and everyone around you. Well, I really appreciate you telling me about the program and, and what you do and how you adhere to it because it is extremely important and it only adapts to me uh, to what I can do to try and lessen what I do and be a better high performer during the time that I outline to get things done. Yeah. And... Uh, I, I totally agree with everything you just said, 100%. Awesome, buddy. Really well, hey, that was a, another great episode. I appreciate yeah. your time, and uh, we'll, we'll see you all in the next one. Thank you all.